Hi, I'm Jennifer Vatsa of Belladonna's Botanicals, and today I wanted to talk about um, something that I get a lot of questions on, and this is in regards to what people are supposed to feel from our flying ointments, tinctures, and smoke blends. I might have a more short range but more intense experience or and have to apply more regularly or I might not need that much and it kind of lasts all night. So um, that's something to take into consideration and also if you have any medi medical issues or, or on medications there might be things that block those those pathways like I know they're safe to use with antidepressants but you might need to use a little bit more of the flying ointment with it. Um, there are things that can enhance the experience such as using cannabis or something like that but you're not going to have the same experience using a flying ointment that you would if you were you know doing mushrooms or you know psychedelics or things like that. They do have a little bit of a psychedelic feature but you're not going to have hallucinations. I mean, you might have very vivid dreams, um, but that's something to kind of take into consideration when you are doing them and your expectations as far as outcome. And because uh, that's that's a common thing. That's a common question I get in you know customer service uh, requests in you know reviews on Etsy and my website, and they and they and they vary wildly, and which tells me that it does come down a lot to your expectations and also your overall, you know, physiology. So, and, and any number of things can block reactions or cause a more extreme reaction. So, um, that's something to take into consideration with it is what you are expecting to get out of it. You know, it, it's, if you're using a flying ointment to aid in astral travel, you should know how to astral travel first and foremost. It's not just going to you know, spontaneously put you there. It'll help you get there. It'll help you get into that right mindset to astral travel um, uh, and to do that type of work. But it's not just smear it on and go, oh, I'm astral traveling now. You know, that's not that's not going to might happen, but that's that's not the norm. Um, so what what I've created my my flying ones and what they mostly are used for whether you regardless of the creator you get them from is they're to deepen your spiritual practice a lot of people use them to get into the right mindset before doing ritual work a lot of people use them for deep meditation i have adhd sometimes i cannot my brain is full of squirrels and raccoons having a, a wild dance party i need to quiet that down if i'm going to try to meditate try to do any kind of spirit channeling try to astral travel do ritual work, anything like that. That's where using the flying ointments and tinctures and smoke blends help with that. Um, it's not necessarily going to, you know, give you some sort of the, the experience that you would have in doing something a lot heavier. And the reason for that is, is those things are not legal. You know, I mean, depending where you're at, I mean, some psilocybin stuff, might be uh, th there are psychedelic medicines and things like that that are but generally i can't i couldn't you know create something with, with psilocybin and sell it and it'd be legal so the way that these things are made they have to be made in a way that is safe for consumers because i don't want to get sued um and you know it does take a lot of work and preparation and know-how to make these things using the, these types of herbs so, and I do have ones that are safer, though, like things that are not using nightshade or fly agaric mushroom, like stuff that's just based on um, using, you know, lotus flowers, wormwood, mugwort, uh, Mexican dreamer, African dream root, things like that, are going to have a different action. They're going to be much lighter. They're going to be much more subtle um, because they're not toxic. They're mostly, um, I mean, wormwood and mugwort have some safety things with them, but... They're not the same as using belladonna or datura or henbane or, or European mandrake or fly agaric mushrooms. So um, you have a much more subtle approach to them. So that's something to take into consideration. And, you know, if you apply it and you don't, and you don't feel anything within that 30 minutes, you can apply again. See how you feel. Apply a little more. See how you feel. 
Um, once you get to the point where you kind of know, you don't have to do that every time, like the first time you do it, to kind of test out, like see where you're at, like, okay, I need to apply this much. So the next time you do it, you don't have to do the every 30 minutes. You could just be like, okay, I'm gonna apply this much because I know that is the amount that works for me. Now where you put it, I usually put it on my forearms, my wrists, I'll put some a little, little less on my temples and, and third eye so it doesn't get in my hair and make it waxy. Um, sometimes I'll put a little bit behind my ears, uh, things like that. But I mean, you can put it elsewhere on your body. Um, just to clarify, they do contain essential oils and a lot of these herbs and, and essential oil combinations are mucous membrane irritants. So you don't want to apply it to areas that are super sensitive. You can apply it, you know, around, like, you know, if you want, yeah, you know, like the sex magic one, if you want to apply it to like your, say your sacral chakra area, not, you know, up your hoo-ha, you know. So, because you, I mean, you have to, you know, use common sense and safety precautions when you're using these type of things. So I just wanted to kind of put that out there and just as a clarification as to how flying ointments and tinctures and things like that work, because I do get a lot of questions and people, um, I think there, there's a lot when you look into the historical lore and things like that, people are expecting, you know, you know the fly off to the Sabbath kind of thing or some kind of weird, you know, um, you know the amount it would take to, to do that would be very unsafe and I would not feel comfortable selling that, you know, the, the, to have it have, be that intense. Um, now, there are different methods of preparation for it that might make things a little more, um, be, might, be, might be a little bit stronger. Um, but, you know, it's, 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 again, comes down to your expectations of what you're gonna get out of it. Some of it's a little bit of your, your mindset and what you're intending to do with it. Um, and again, it's, a lot of it's your, 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 your person, your body makeup and, um, you know, any health or medical issues or any medications you're on may interact with that and how you metabolize things. So, um, I hope this helps answer some questions when it comes to flying ointments and entheogenic products like that. Um, uh, if you have any questions, don't leave a comment or, you know, uh, let us know and we'll be more than happy. I do have other videos um, going more in, in depth into flying ointments. I will uh, link them in the description or in the comments um, wherever I remember to put them. And don't forget to click like and subscribe and thanks for watching. Bye.